Hi guys, welcome back to Just Carb Rob. Okay, so what do we got here? We got our fat little Elvis zombie guy. Okay. That's what he's looking like. Got hands. Got, got his shoes on now. Yeah, it looks like we might need a little more work on those shoes. Remember guys, wear your gloves uh, when using knives. Okay? I never wear gloves when I'm using my Dremel and the main reason for that is that that rotary tool gets tangled up into a glove and it can wind it up into the glove and break your flex shaft um, same way with any type of uh, machinery, the heavier machinery like band saws and uh, lathes, wood lathe, metal lathe, drill press. Uh, I was always taught that you never want to wear jewelry loose fitting clothes uh, your hair if you have long hair you should always tie it back I seen a fellow one day on a drill press he had that uh, and I remember I was in shop class in the late 80's okay and I seen a dude he had that long heavy metal band hair thing going he didn't have it tied back and guess what happened? He got scalped. His hair got in that drill press, wound up, and that drill press isn't going to stall out. And it took a big chunk of, big chunk of his scalp and his hair right out, right off, man. It was disgusting. He lived and everything, but I tell you what, I bet you he still got a big bald patch where that hair came out because it was a, it was a mess. So, wear your safety glasses. If you got long hair, pull it back because you don't want that Dremel getting tangled up in there and zipping up to the top of your head. You could end up with a big bald spot and a broken flex shaft. And if you're using a Dremel without a flex shaft, mercy. Okay, so there's just some safety stuff. Okay, safety glasses. Uh... If you're using knives, please wear cut resistant knives. Or, yeah, cut resistant knives. Please wear your cut your carving glove. Please wear a carving glove. Especially for new guys uh, that don't really have their knife control figured out. Please wear carving gloves. If you're using Dremel, that's, it's up to you, but I would highly suggest not to wear gloves. Um, especially if, if you don't have a flex shaft. At least with a flex shaft, you stand a chance. The flex shaft will break and spare your fingers. Um, if you're going straight off a Dremel or a bigger type of rotary tool, uh, man could end up with some broken fingers and always wear your safety glasses and if you're using a Dremel with a dust even with a dust collector you should be wearing a dust mask um, Harbor Freight has these neoprene dust masks they're not heavy they form to your face nice uh, I think they're like 15 bucks give your lungs a break guys 
Um, I, I have a more heavy duty dust mask here that I use. And I'm, I'm guilty, I don't use it all the time, as I should. But uh, you know how it is when you're making video and uh, I can make up a thousand excuses why I don't use it. But I do use it. Okay, so what we've done here is we have cut his leg. We've made his legs a little more skinny to the backside here. And we've done that by digging in deep with our burr, with our, our nugget burr right here, this guy. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not showing it very well on my camera, but I'm trying to look up at my camera. Okay, so that is it. It kind of looks like stone, but it's not stone, it's carbide. We've gone over that a million times, but for you new guys, if, if you're new to my channel, uh, you'll see me use that burr quite a bit um, for smoothing things out. It's a lot less aggressive than the extreme burrs, like this guy here. Very pointy, pointy, pointy. Very aggressive burr. Okay. Trying to put them, ouch, just poke myself with one of them. Ow, that, that smarts. That was a stupid thing to do. Okay. So, we've, uh, I've gone through with this spur right here, okay? See if I can get a little more light over this way. Okay, this spur right here is kind of like a saw blade, but it is on top. It is does have cutting on top too, okay? So it's kind of like a saw blade type deal. And that's what I went through and I cut all these hairs in with, okay? Cut all them hairs in. Then I went back, like I always do, with our wood burner. Um, our buddy Pete Blair sent us some NICAD wire. Nickel chromium wire? I can't remember what it's called. Um, and I made this tip with that wire. Thanks, Pete. And I was able, I put it on my little anvil I got over there. Got a little anvil over there. And a, a tiny ball peen hammer. And I flattened this with that hammer. Clunk, 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 clunk. Flattened it out. And then I sharpened it up like a knife. So I can do those real fine hairs in there. And that burns a lot of that fuzz from the other tool. The other tool makes a lot of fuzz. Uh, so we get in there with this guy, and we burn. Let's see, I'll turn it on and show you. Okay, we come in with this guy, and we will burn the hairs in. In between what we've already done with the uh, that saw-looking thing, saw-looking blade. Now, I did that. I used the saw thing instead of the aluminum cutter. Um, it's kind of square and usually we'll turn that up on a 90 degree angle but uh, for this little guy that was just too too coarse I think so you can see um, it gets in there between the hairs we've already cut and darkens it up inside there and on the other side of it we can get in between the hairs we didn't cut with it and we can turn it up or turn it down right now this is set at 25 usually I run it at about 30 something like 30 36 I believe is what I normally have it at but uh, with this little guy we turned it down to 20 24 it's at it says and we got in there and we burnt, I spent like an hour or so just going in here and burning these hairs in. Like, like that, just walking around it, 
burning the hairs in. And even with that much time invested into it, I can still see spots that I can go back to. and burn the hairs in. Plus this works really good for for doing some shading. Okay. Like back here behind the ear where you can't really get in there with a Dremel. You can just burn those hairs right in up to behind the ears like that. Uh, my big thing with the wood burner is getting rid of the fuzzies. Okay, I hate fuzzies on my pieces. Because uh, when you go to paint them, if you're into painting them, and I did the sideburns too here with this, to give it a little texture. See that? And then of course I did here by the uh, where the collar comes up and down here and um, around the mouth as you guys can see and down here around the pant legs and up into his inseam uh, when I paint this I will the, he's going to be wearing a white jumpsuit, red, white, and blue white jumpsuit like he used to in the 70s. See that? Signed it. Signed it, Jordy. Signed your pieces. And so that's what he's looking like right now. So let's go ahead and go in here and he's almost done, guys. Our zombie is almost done. We're uploading right now video number three. And this is video number four. So I always like to come back and the wood burner also makes these cuts in the hands deeper um, and when you paint it it uh, kind of like antiques it for you so it'll these dark areas that you're burning in will show through the paint with any luck now this guy's fingers are actually separated I don't know if you guys can see that but his fingers are actually separated so he's like I'm coming to get you kinda like that one of my subs made a great suggestion that I should have put a a bone guitar in his hands uh, it could still happen the only thing I see that I'd have to do is maybe cut cut his uh, arms back a little bit. I don't know though, his belly's sticking out there pretty far, so it might be able to just rest the guitar. But I'd have to make new hands. Because right now he's like, his hands are like, you know, brrrr. But, uh, so I would probably have to make some new hands to hold the guitar, which I can do. So you never know, you might see that coming up here. I really like the idea of that bone guitar. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, I'm just sad I didn't think about it earlier. Okay, so I think, you know, other than coming back, let me turn this wood burner off. We don't need that no more. Um, I think what we can do because he's wearing one of them one-piece jumpsuits, right? So, I can't remember, but I, I think they had a zipper that went all the way up the front. So what we could do, this is what's great about the hands. 
If they were carved in place, I couldn't just pop them out of my way. Um, we'll just put a, a center line in here. There's our center line. What we can do is just uh, draw a line down on each side of our each side of our center line. Apparently, our center line our center is not center because here's the the V. So we're gonna have to go with that. See, we can draw a line down and then put another line next to it and that would represent the zipper of the jumpsuit right now we can put that in we can take our wood burner and just run right down there turn the heat up a little bit on it and put them two lines in And call it good or we can take a V tool and run down each side of it then come back with the wood burner that'd give it a little more depth or we could use a knife with the knife we just plunge straight in follow our line straight down I'm kind of holding it like a pencil, like that. We can follow that line straight down. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Follow our line straight down. We want to kind of keep that zipper as straight as we can, like that. And then we can come back with our knife on an angle like that and just pop a little chip right out of there just like that and then we can do the other, same thing on this side okay, remember if you go against the grain of your wood you will dig in deeper than you want I usually like trying to do these cuts in one smooth pass. And there's that chip out of there. Okay? Just like that. Missed the bottom of the zipper. Okay. So then what we'll do is we'll come back. We're going to get a longer knife here because we need to reach over the arm for this. And we will just clean up that cut right there, that V cut we made. We'll just take that one and feather it out a little bit, like that. Then we can come back and get rid of our pencil mark. We don't want pencil marks on them. The paint, for some reason, the paint does not like that graphite. doesn't want to stick when you got the graphite there and then we'll just do a little little chip cut at the bottom so it's just showing that the zipper is ending like that We are fighting that wood again. That green. I'm just taking a little bit, a little roll cut there at the base. Just choking up on my knife. And remember, keep your fingers from off the sharp side of the knife. Like that. Just 
clean it up. Just like that, there. Okay, so now the zipper is in. And I guess we might as well, we're gonna leave that wood burner set low at 25. And then we're just gonna run it, nice. Right down the side. Right now the other side, and all that's doing is is putting the zipper line in a little bit more for us. And it's defining it so that when we uh, we paint it, like I said, it's kind of like uh, antiquing it. Plus it helps keeping the paint from uh, running or spreading. So it kind of keeps it, when we paint this zipper, we paint, well we're going to paint this all white, but what we want to do is uh, have that antiquing type deal going. Okay, so we'll just keep that antiquing type deal going there to uh, so when we paint it, it'll it'll show a shadow of it. I guess is the best way to put it. So it will show the shadow. Now if I had a longer if I made a longer uh, bit here for my wood burner. I could reach way down in there and wood burn that too, but I didn't. So what we'll do is we will in these areas here, deep inside there, a uh, little trick that Jordy showed me is just paint that all black. Paint that all black in there. And then when you come back with your white paint, you make yourself a, a line. So what we would do is just say okay that's where we're stopping you'll paint this deep down in here you'll paint all that black same way here and down this side you'll paint all that black and then uh, when you do your cape you can paint it a different color you can paint it like red or white because this is going to be white he's all he's going to be all all in white okay and I'll have to go back and look at some old uh, footage but I think it was all white it was red, white, and blue um, with the stars. So that's what we're going to give him. He's going to have a white jumpsuit, um, probably a red cape, and maybe we'll paint it blue in here. And then we can put white and blue stars on the back, and the jumpsuit's going to be white. So then the jumpsuit will have uh, blue and red stars. I haven't quite figured out the paint scheme yet. But there he is. I think that's all the carbon he's going to get, guys. So I guess this is actually the end of the Elvis, the Elvis zombie guy. I have a little sanding to do. Some rough spots there. i got to come in and clean up. But I think that's going to be the end for him. So this will be our last 20-minute video on the Elvis zombie guy. Uh, now we still have our bigger wizard to paint, we now have our our zombie to paint, and we have our little cowboy to paint, our little gunfighter guy. So that's uh, three guys and I think that's plenty of guys to have done to paint. I think I can squeeze in one more carving before I start a walking stick. Now the walking stick is probably going to be a 120 minute videos and it's not going to be a tutorial. So we'll see what goes on with that. Okay guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, just carve. Carve every day, carve something awesome. And we will catch you guys on the next one. Share, subscribe, and like if you want to. If you don't want to, that's cool too. Um, just keep watching the videos and liking them. You don't have to subscribe. But if you want to subscribe, I'd appreciate it. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Say goodbye, Elvis. Bye. Bye. Bye.